Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is a, an awesome opportunity, and I really appreciate uh, being here and, and being able to speak with everybody about something that I'm very passionate about and uh, to explore and explain ways that we're using OpenShift's, I mean, Red Hat's OpenShift platform uh, to really help us accelerate change within Boeing. So uh, real quick, I want to brag for a second. I have the best job in all of Boeing, um, and that's 170,000 employees. And my goal through the innovation cells is to have every employee within Boeing able to say the same thing. And um, so I, I tried to put it in context, you know, one out of 170,000. What are some, some things that people, um, you know, it's not being struck by lightning. It's not, it's not quite that set of odds. But I, I did find one interesting fact, and that is there was a, a mother that had twin boys and then <coughs> twin girls uh, a few years later. So the odds of her doing that without any kind of medical intervention are one in 170,000. So just keep that little nugget of, of information in, in your pocket from now on. So let's see. Uh, if you have questions at any time, please don't hesitate to ask. I want this to be very interactive. Um, the first set of slides, the, the first section of the briefing is, is going to go through a number of slides. Most of the slides are going to set the stage for what we want to talk about to give you some perspective as to why OpenShift is a good fit for us right now. So innovation is everywhere. Um, we've heard it almost incessantly over the last few years. Uh, just have some, some, we're not going to go through all these figures, but there's some really interesting figures up here. And if you just take the TV commercials, for example, if you do the math there, that's every minute of every day for the last year, we have been inundated by a commercial talking about innovation, uh, whether it be um, in automotive, you, know, you name it, across the board. If there's a television commercial, there's probably a good chance there's, there's something about innovation um, not far behind. Um, just the books, the number of books that have been published in the last three months is almost 900 books in three months with innovation in the title or the core theme. And then you talk about our business leaders, 94% in a recent uh, survey demonstrated that innovation was their highest priority. And then regardless of your, your politics, in last night's State of the Union address, the president referenced innovation specifically three times. And if I butcher his quote, please don't get me, uh, don't hold me to it. But essentially what he said is, we know, and these, these are his words, we know that the nation that it goes all in on innovation today will own the global economy of tomorrow and the US must maintain its edge, or the America must maintain its edge with this respect. So I mean, it's, it's becoming common language throughout all of our everyday interactions. And that can be good and that can be bad. Um, and, and one of the ways in which it can be bad is if we don't have consistency in what innovation means to the broader population or to the stakeholders of innovation. And it, it can lead to, to what we, we believe is innovation degradation. And the idea behind innovation degradation is, is as we hit this buzzworthiness of um, innovation, it devalues potentially the, the real strength of innovation. And, and so one of the, some of the outcomes of that are false ex expectations. There, there is no magic innovation pill to take. Um, and if, if we are proposing that there is, we're gonna set ourselves up for um, a, lot of, a lot of frustration and we're gonna find a lot of wasted effort. Um, I, I personally have been through this in Boeing where we had uh, some prior large scale innovation initiatives and did not feel confident at the end of that process that I knew any better about what we were doing to innovate within Boeing. Um, so that, that's, that's part of the, the baseline as to why we wanted to create the, the Boeing innovation cells. And the Boeing innovation cells are a part of a, a concept that we call um, organic innovation that we're gonna go through in a second. This, to put it in context, I don't believe that the Boeing company has a, an issue or a problem with innovation. We've been innovating for 100 years. We've helped define what innovation means in complete industries. And the, the, what I don't believe we have done yet is optimize that system 
for the composite view of innovation across an entire ecosystem. And the way that we believe we're adding more value into that equation is through organic innovation. So we define organic innovation. This is, this is very uh, nerdy, OK? I, I'll take credit for creating it. So I then take credit that I'm a nerd or a geek. You can I, call it all you want. Um, we are an engineering firm. And at the core of engineering is science. So I think, I think there's a very good tie here. But, um, and it's very difficult to read in the back. I apologize. The, the color scheme is, is not well suited for this environment. But there's, there's just some key elements of this framework that are really important. And you'll notice at the top, we've got grassroots employee action fused with executive leadership in a safe environment to produce compelling advantages to our customers and stakeholders. Um, and, and the reason that that's important is because we need to engage all of our employees to help innovate across the entire business, not just focused on product innovation, but a concept we call full spectrum innovation. And that's innovating across all aspects of our business, whether it be business model innovation, customer service innovation. You know, the Boeing company is a very large company, and we have essentially an economy that runs within it. And so we have learnings from throughout that ecosystem and that economy that we can apply to our external uh, stakeholders to provide greater value to them as well. So the three kind of foundational aspects of, of the, the core elements here are, are just, it's really simple. Fun and easy engagement. We want employees to have fun. We want them to engage and we want them to explore their ideas. We have entre entrepreneurial operations. And in a large company like Boeing, that's very important. There's, especially with the products that we produce, there are a lot of pillars of bureaucracy and layers of hierarchy as we work our way through. And those are in place for very good reasons. Um, anybody that took a, a flight to get here or travels regularly has a deep appreciation for those constraints that we have on our internal systems and processes. But as we talk about small scale employee driven ideas, being able to foster, get nurtured, and grow, there's a big conflict between those two scenarios. And what we try and do is provide an avenue to maneuver between those pillars of hierarchy and bureaucracy to get those ideas vetted, explored, and integrated back into the business. The last piece is that it's a unique environment. So the Boeing Innovation Cells provide a unique physical space. We've got 11 innovation cells across the world. All of them provide a unique physical space that doesn't feel like the typical cube or office environment. It doesn't feel like the typical conference room within Boeing. And it's all designed to drive collaboration and enable employees to explore their ideas. The process that we use to do that is what we call the ideas to reality process. And, and when I say reality, I mean adding value back to the company in some form. Um, so, Anybody can have an idea, and we won't go through every step here, but just to set the tone, everybody can have an idea, and everybody in Boeing has ideas. But it does the company no good if we hold those ideas in, if we believe that I need to mature my idea to a certain degree before I feel comfortable sharing it with the rest of my coworkers. So after we generate the idea, we need to share the idea. And this is, this is important because we're not talking about sharing ideas in a database of employees just submitting a bunch of stuff and then having some team off in the back, you know, going through evaluating those ideas, filling up our innovation pipeline, you know, log jamming that innovation pipeline at the front end because we have, you know, just this this huge backlog of ideas. The way that this process works is that employees take their ideas after they share them and take the action to convert them into reality. So it eliminates a, a huge bureaucracy for us to manage this by enabling employees. If, if we can take the passions of employees and convert that and match it with the needs of decision makers and leaders throughout the company, and even new ventures that we can create outside of the traditional business areas within the company, then we have provided a plan, a, a path of action for employees to take their own ideas and convert them to reality. And 
the, the concept behind all of this is, is leverage. Is everyone familiar with the idea of design thinking? So, so if you're not, just, just take a deep breath. When you leave today, you go out the front door, you see a, a little institution called Stanford University. The, the absolute core of design thinking is being led at Stanford University. Um, so I just would encourage you to, to take a look into that if you're not familiar with it. But it's, it's about getting to the idea that we have at every interaction, every service, every product that we provide is about a human interaction. And understanding with deep knowledge and validating the assumptions that are made on how our products and services interact with humans is, is fundamental to our operations. So um, we, we are in no way thought leaders, Boeing I'm talking about, are the thought leaders on design thinking, but we are leveraging more and more the, the institutions like Stanford, the organizations like IDEO to help us better understand and, and use those uh, methodologies to, to produce more compelling value for our customers and stakeholders. So now, th that was all to set the stage. Now we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about OpenShift and how we're using it within Boeing. I am not, just be very clear here, I am not an IT manager, I am not an IT specialist. I took a C programming class in college and I barely got through it. So I am, I am here as a stakeholder for the innovation cells to help our employees accelerate their, their ability to convert their ideas into reality. And we have found uh, an ability through OpenShift to do that. And um, if everyone, this is genericized, this is, this is Red Hat's own marketing material, so I'm, I'm reusing. Uh, the idea though is, is this describes the transition from our traditional infrastructure to platform as a service, which OpenShift is a, a prime example of. And, and the reasons that we have piloted this within Boeing are because we, we believe, and we're demonstrating now, that we can reduce costs, and I know that's not the primary driver that we've heard from, from our earlier speakers, but we're also enabling the employees to get into an environment, get their, um, their website, their application provisioned with clicks of a mouse within 10 to 15 minutes at most, and get going on, on converting their idea into reality. And, and the importance of that, when we talk about so I'll, I'll do a question and answer real quick. What, are, what do you think the top two pain points for employees within a large organization, maybe Boeing, that would have um, the, the, biggest, the biggest hurdles for employees to, to execute on their ideas? Just, just generic functions, we'll, we'll say. Why Anybody? To to okay, so you're, you're way down deeper than, than, than <laughs> so I'm thinking organizational functions. I'll give it two more seconds before I bore everybody here. Anticipation, anticipation, okay. IT and supplier management are the two biggest pain points that our employees have to executing their ideas in a scalable way um, throughout the enterprise. So what we're trying to do is, is make the pain point of IT in a local environment for provisioning new applications um, seamless and, and lightning fast in comparison to the way that we normally have to do it. And this is not a, a Boeing set of processes, but I think it's representative of what Boeing employees would have to go through if they had an application and wanted to start developing on it. Um, traditionally, uh, it, and it's not much better in the virtualized world uh, for Boeing either. Uh, so this is, this is a dramatic shift for us, and, and we're excited to pilot it from a business perspective for the company and hopefully grow and demonstrate that capability. So, additional stakeholders within Boeing also re realize those same benefits. So another way that we're using it besides rapidly developing modern web applications is to extend the life of our legacy software applications. And this is very important to uh, you know, driving reuse within uh, an organization the size of ours to help increase our affordability. When we can reuse our legacy applications and, and provide the mechanism for them to be used in a web format um, is, is extremely important to us. And we have um, actually been exploring ways to create new business models using this capability 
to get additional revenue for the company um, just by using those things that are collecting dust on, on the shelf right now. Um, so so it's, it's very, we're early in the development of the applications to demonstrate this, but we are on a path to, to have some really great results. And we hope to be able to share some of those results at Summit later in April. Um, so maybe a little teaser for that great event that's planned up in San Francisco. But in general, we believe that leveraging that legacy is, is not holding on to the past, but it's more, a more cost-effective way to reuse the, the capability that we have in a new and uh, dynamic way. So regardless of the size of the organization that you all support, I just challenge you to define what legacy is for you and how you'll define that legacy going forward. And that's really all that I wanted to talk about. Uh, some closing slides on, or comments on the back to reinforce what we talked through. But I'd be really happy to take some, some questions or, or comments from anybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I'll be here all day as well if you do have additional questions. And Sadiq.